been awesome today. Thank you, Charlotte. It's just an amazing, amazing crowd. And, um, you know, I know there's a, a common thread that's going through today. And, you know, the speaker before me, Deb, wherever you are, um, there are so many people that are here ready to just open their arms and hug you. And it's just a point to I just want to make just because women just supporting women. And it's so important just to know that. You know, what, whatever stage you're in, people are here to support each other, right? We're all unique, and that's what makes us special, but it's just women to support each other. So I am Robin Myers, and I'm going to talk to you about knowing your worth, which is my big motto. And if you're holding one of these, you're going to get one if you haven't, but my band's the inside message is knowing your worth. So it took me a very long time, actually, to really claim my identity. And let me tell you a little bit about my story. For really as long as I can remember, I pretty much hid throughout my life. I was a very quiet, quiet and shy, introverted child. In fact, I actually didn't speak until I was almost four years old. Um, I was the youngest of three. I had two older brothers. Pretty much I just had a point, and everybody ran and did whatever I thought they thought they, I needed. So I really never used my voice. Sounds cute, however, um, that rolled into me really never using my voice. I was very protected, um, being the youngest of three with two older brothers, and so I never really learned to use my voice. I was a people pleaser. I did what was expected of me. I pleased my parents. I pleased my teachers. Education was quite important in my household, and so I really, when I reflect now, I think I put a lot of that on myself. As much as I thought I was pleasing them, it was my impression that I was pleasing them. So just remember that. But not using a voice, um, for instance, I went through high school. My brothers didn't like the public school, so my parents decided to put me in private school. I grew up very well, you know, we, we had everything we needed. I grew up outside of New York City, by the way. I keep forgetting I'm like not in the States anymore, you know, but uh, I need your slippers. But, um, <laughs> click my heels. But I grew up outside of New York City and my parents decided to put me in private school. Now remember, this is going into high school. I had no conversation in this at all. In fact, my parents were like, um, you're going here today, you're not going to go to your school, we're going to go take these tests to go to this private school. It's called Saddle River Day School, which means nothing to any of you, but very small, graduating class of 50 people. Um, I took these tests, and they said, and you start on Monday. Okay. Well, if I wasn't shy enough, right, close one door, and here I go to another school. Never say goodbye to people. Um, and this school was actually in New Jersey. It's another state. It, wasn't, it was about 30 minutes. But it meant that the people I grew up with, I wasn't going to school with anymore. What I learned to do was really shut doors. Um, and I, I took me really through my adult life not to do this. So I shut that door, started a new school, go through high school, get ready to apply to colleges. Um, I was a good student, wasn't a great student. I mean, I had to work for my grades. Um, my, for some reason, someone decided I should be going to medical school. I think my mom had an opportunity, and she thought she was empowering me because she wasn't allowed to that day and age. It just wasn't the thing women did. So I think she thought it was like a good thing for me to do the sciences. I don't know. Um, so I went to this school. I applied to college. Now, I have three kids of my own, 21, 23, and 26. Those years are so important, right? Um, this is their next stage of their life. I mean, I, I love traveling to schools with my kids, but honestly, I didn't have the say into where they were gonna go to school. That was their choice. I could only support it. Um, I have three very different kids. I have an actress in New York, and then I have a financial planner, and then an entrepreneur who's in Thailand right now, actually. But um, that's their time to thrive and grow. Well, again, high school, was, uh, the college was picked for me. And if you know the states at all, it was in Ohio. It was called Hiram College in Hiram, Ohio, which means like really small town. Take a girl out of New York City, 
who's quiet and shy, and put her in the middle of nowhere, Hiram, Ohio, and what do you think? I'm not going to talk to anybody for four years. So just remember that part. Things roll around, and it's time to apply to medical school. Remember I said I was a good student, I wasn't a great student? Well, to no great surprise, I did not get into medical school. I was okay with it. My family wasn't really crazy about it, but I was okay with it. But I've never voiced anything. My purpose for telling you all of this is because I never discovered who I was. I didn't want to go to medical school. I actually had the chance to go outside of the States, but I wasn't allowed to because that wasn't the thing to do. But I could go to graduate school, and from graduate school I could reapply to med school. So I went on living this life of mine, never really figuring out what, what did I want to do? Who is Robin Myers? Still a mystery. I didn't know. I grew up out in New York. I loved theater. I loved dance. I loved music. I wasn't allowed to explore that kind of thing. Well, I stayed in Ohio, in Cleveland. I went to graduate school, and I get this degree. I'm about to get this degree in molecular genetics. And um, keep in mind, I'm, I'm growing up a little bit. You know, I'm coming out of my shell, like not locking myself in an apartment. But I'm, I'm growing up a teeny bit. And I get a phone call. It's May of, I think, 1988. And I get a phone call from my father. My mom wasn't feeling great. I should come home for the weekend back to New York. So fly back to New York. Um, she's diagnosed with cancer. And so I spend a little time with her. What does that mean? I don't know, but everything will be fine. You go back to school because why? That's what's expected of you. That's what you're supposed to do. My mom and I were very close, actually. Um, she was the one person I did speak with. September of that year, I just turned 21 in August. September, same year, um, she passes away. She happened to be 53. I was 21. So through that time, I um, really went from lonely to lonelier, um, incredibly isolated. And as a 21-year-old, um, those were the times like I really needed my mom. I kind of needed to know, tell me about life. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know, I kind of have an idea what those boxes are and what I'm supposed to check, but she wasn't there. When you lose somebody, you know, you um, go through those stages, and you never quite get over it, but you go through those stages, and you learn to move through that. So from there, I um, actually had met my future husband. We were dating, and he was in the Washington, D.C. area. Well, what did I do? I followed the guy. Now, I work with <laughs> teens and women. Now I work more with women. but. I always say, don't follow the guy. I follow the guy. Don't follow the guy. It's exactly what I coach on. Do not follow the guy. I did. Um, but again, you know, I was about 25. I checked the box, and I was like, oh, maybe I'm supposed to do this. So I follow the, my, actually, I was a little younger than that. Follow the guy. I'm married at 25. Start a family at 26. You see this pattern. I'm still not really sure who I am, right? These are the years we're supposed to explore and find out what you like, what you don't like. You don't have any constraints on you. You're supposed to do things and know who you are. What do you want to do with your life? Well, I went into motherhood. You know, I became the wife, the mother, the dog walker, the chef chauffeur, everything else. And um, that was all great until my kids were getting older and then one was in college, the second one was going in, and then I have to go figure out getting a job because it was just two tuitions. If you don't have kids and you're going to have kids, think more than two years apart when you have tuitions. That's kind of a little tight spot. But um, so I get a job. It was a great job. It was in education. Finally, my science background comes into play. So it wasn't so bad. I used my science. Um, so I tutored, and I was the director of education for this program. But here's the thing. When you work outside the home, sometimes you can switch hats, right? You kind of change. You kind of lose the other stuff at home. You go, you work for the day, you come back, right? Um, I had this boss, this woman, who was not very happy in her own life, but really 
was very demeaning. What I learned and what I tell everyone and what everyone should really realize is no one should make themselves look better at your expense. However, you can control that. You really can. At that time, though, I, I didn't control it. I really did not control it at all. If anything, I just let it beat me down. So here I was, you know, the pressures at ho of home, doing all the house stuff, just going through the motion of the day, right? But then I go to work, and I'm having these crazy hours getting beaten down, really, by this woman. Well, I, to be perfectly honest with you, my depression kicked in 20-fold, absolutely 20-fold. I just couldn't figure out, you know, when you think about, like, you're coming out of the well, and it was like someone just bopped me back on the head, and back down I went. So um, I was driving home. I mean, I, I went to the doctor and all sorts of stuff like that, but I was driving home from one of these projects that I was working on. Oh, sorry, just hit my thing. Um, and I, there was a fork in the road, and I was on this highway, and there was this overpass, and I literally pulled off the side of the road because I had had it. I was just done. And I pulled off the side of the road, and I really th sat and I thought about it, and I was crying in the car, and, you know, my husband's like, we have two tuitions, you know, insurance is covered, this is great, you're making a good income, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I am dying inside. I am literally dying. And I'm looking at this road thinking, if I drive that way, could I just hurt myself and nobody else? And I honestly thought about it. I really did. Here's what happened, though. You know, I figured the boys would be fine. Husband's going to be fine. My boys, OK. My daughter, there's my daughter. How could I do that to her, right? Here, I know, I know what it's like to lose your mother. I can't do that to her. I've got to be. I've got to be there to answer all those questions. Well, I got wiped the tears away, put the music on, sped on home. They all thought I kind of. I really was in trouble at that point, like mentally, and um, went back to my office. And I went in and I quit. I absolutely quit. I said, I'm done. This woman said, You're you're the director of our education program. You know, you're a director. You're C level. You can't quit. I'm like, okay, here's two weeks' notice. She goes, no, I need like six months. And I'm like, I am done. And that changed my life. Because at that point, no matter what I was going to do, I was going to find out who I was. And I was not going to let anyone put me back down. Because here's the point. You have a voice. You have to use your voice. Any age, doesn't matter. It took me 53 years to figure this out, so I'm trying to speed people up on this a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but if you're older than me, don't worry. You can still do this. Um, but you have a voice, so use it. Second thing is this. I looked for um, validation from people. You know, externally, things look great. Had a nice home, had dogs. Kids were doing what they were supposed to do and, and thriving. My husband was fine and thriving. You know, dinner was on the table at 6 o'clock. Things looked great. Inside, things were not so great. I was hurting. I was really hurting. And I didn't realize how much I was hurting until that point where this woman was just, just so negative. And I was like, I don't know what problem you're dealing with, but I know it's not me. So the facade, super. Inside, not so good. So the point is this, even though I had the external validation, you know, I was in school, I was volunteering, I was, I was, you know, team mom for whatever soccer team, whichever kid was on and whatever, even though I, there was the external validation, didn't mean a thing. Ladies, it didn't mean a thing. You're the only one that can validate your self-worth. You are the only one. Whatever the situation is, you cannot look for that outside of you. So you do have the power to create your life. You really do. You have absolute control and to create the life that you want. And I, I want you all to know that. Create your life. Please don't look for external validation. And you know those negative voices that always come up. 
you know, whether you wake up, it's like, oh, I have to either deal with house or home or, or kids or the boss or the job, you know, whether you're in sales, whatever, whatever you're doing. Um, get those negative voices out of, out of your head. There's plenty of little ways I can tell you to do it, which I can tell you outside how to do that. But you do have control on that. And probably one of the most important points is that it's just yourself or it's non-negotiable. You are so worth it. And that's why I um, love that phrase about your, you are worth it. You are worth everything. You're worth supporting each other. You're worth living the life that you want. And you have a voice to use. And that's why we're here at the Fearless Women's Summit. So be unapologetically you. You don't have to look for validation from anybody at all. And live the life that you want to live. Be fearless. So I hope you have a great day. I will be out there at my table, whatever that is. And um, come see me if you don't have one of these. Um, they're there for the taking. So enjoy your day. Thank you. Big round of applause for Robin. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Good job.